This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Whitmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. I need to change it up. I point once at you, once at them, and I'm back at you <laughs> for the third one. But welcome in to the Primetime Podcast here on MVP Most Valuable Podcast. And this is where we talk about college football, college basketball. I'm not going to do what I did in our first take, Brandon. not going to ask you about all the other college sports. I know the answer. No, we're just going to look at college <laughs> football. We're just going to look at college basketball. But today we've got a jam-packed show for you guys. Going to have Matt on the line, one of our just very, I wanted to say valued patrons, but that's not the right word, our loving patron. We, the patrons, we can't do what we do each and every day without their support. Going to have him on to talk about Big Ten basketball. We're also going to be talking about Duke basketball, um, a little draft stock for the Big Three, a little Tyus Jones, how that's going to play in, and then I got a special um, Zion question for Brandon coming out of the mouth of Scottie Pippen. Don't worry, Brandon, it's a very easy question. Good, because you usually way. throw like a lot of like oh, no, thought... The, pr- type of questions at mm-hmm. me that will take a lot of time out no, no, no. it's not one, just a, a quick boom type of th- answer this question will be very easy and might just be a yes or no answer with how easy it is and then we will end the show taking a look at romeo lankford's draft stock are we too low on him because some of the commenters are saying that in mocks and big boards that were a little bit low on Romeo Langford. So we're going to take a look at the Indiana Star today. But before we do, I'm going to throw out that Patreon segment. Make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most podcast. If you want to be like Matt, go ahead and sign up. Patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. But Brandon, let's start with our first topic. And we're going to look at the Duke Blue Devils. And this is a topic, I will be completely honest, I didn't know where to start with it. So the the kind of meat and potatoes of this is Trey Jones. In the game against Syracuse, which Duke did lose, Trey Jones went out of the game after six minutes with an AC joint injury in his shoulder. That injury kept him out of the Virginia game where Duke barely escaped the Virginia Cavaliers gave Virginia their first loss of the year, winning 72-70. to 70. I'm going to let you kind of decide where this discussion stands because when it comes to Trey Jones' injury, we can talk about how it affects the team, but Mike Sh- uh, Coach K, I keep trying to say his last name, I should just say Coach K. Coach K came out and said it's not going to be a long injury. He's not going to be out for a month or anything. He's like, I don't know if it'll be this game being the Virginia game, or the next game, but he will be back sooner rather than later. I'm going to let you start. Where do you want to start this discussion when it comes to Duke and Tyus Jones and the Duke three? Trey Jones. Okay, go ahead. Did I say Tyus Jones? Yeah. Trey Jones. Trey Jones and the Duke three. I always throw his brother in there, and his brother is in the NBA. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it with Trey Jones because of the fact that this is something when we talked about a while back, uh, months ago now, <laughs> And we were saying, will the Duke Blue Devils go undefeated? I said no, you said yes. I Mm -hmm. said no because while, yes, this is a very good Duke team, I still think even though they're not ranked at number one, they are the number one team in the country when they have their pieces in place. Now, one of those pieces is out, Trey Jones. Again, we don't know how long that is, what uh, separated shoulder, sprained shoulder, Mm -hmm. something. The AC Um, joint. uh, Something with the shoulder there, but... The number one thing right now with him and with him being gone is you you do not have a true point guard out on the floor. Mm -hmm. You do not have your number one point guard, the guy who your offense runs through, out on the floor. That's number one. So the guy who has the most confidence in bringing up the ball and moving the ball around and, and really controlling the offense, he's not on the floor. Number two, you have lost possibly your best defender. Uh, as well, just and, and stats stats show that in the Syracuse game, which Duke did lose uh, last week, Syracuse had six points, five turnovers, and twelve possessions before Trey Jones left. Mm-hmm. It had eighty nine points and ten turnovers in seventy seven possessions when he wasn't on the floor. Now that's a small sample size, but still, it's a pretty accurate sample size of the way that he plays defense Mm -hmm. when he's out there on the floor. He causes some chaos defensively. And 
makes the other team struggle. When he's not there, he, I'm not saying that Duke does not play any defense, but I'm saying that they go down a level. They go down a rung on the ladder in terms of defense when Trey Jones isn't in the ball game. He brings an added energy, pressure, all the words you want to use to describe a good defensive player, he's got that. The Virginia game was very close. They still won. Mm -hmm. They're lucky that they were able to still win. They ended up losing that game against Syracuse. Going to be a tough game. Syracuse is deep. You talk about defense. Syracuse has a very, very difficult defense. And what Duke tried to do is they tried to shoot the three, especially when Trey Jones was gone. Three, 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 three. I think they went nine of 43 from three. They weren't good. They mm -hmm. weren't good. And a lot of those a lot of those things when it comes down to something like that Zion you you and I were were doing the podcast last week and I'm like Zion's got 25 Zion's got 30 mm -hmm. we were leaving I go Zion probably ended with 40 yeah he didn't but mm -hmm. Zion may not have that game every night even with that game they didn't win mm -hmm. that then well, I mean, kind of look that, at the I Virginia was, game I was just going to say that kind of then goes Our, into the it, so I kind of took it from Trey Jones to mm -hmm. the big three, but I'll, I'll now kind of hand it over to you for, for, for your thoughts on that. But I think with Trey Jones gone for however long mm -hmm. he is gone, it's a big loss for them because he's not the scorer. We know that. Mm -hmm. They know that. But he is the one who helps to lead and give <laughs> and feed the ball to the scorers, and he is a huge presence on the defensive side. And the one thing I will <coughs> – throw out there is I'm at the Florida State game, not the Virginia game. Zion had a ridiculous game against um, Virginia, but Florida State, the one where it needed a Cam Reddish three basically at the buzzer to win that game, you had Zion only with 11 points. And yes, Tyus Jones did play that game. Um, Zion Trey. also, or Trey, Trey played that game, played 40 Zion also, Tyus also hasn't played for Duke in a little bit. Yeah, he hasn't played for a little bit. But I'm still going to call him Dias, and you're going to have to correct <laughs> me every time. But Trey Jones played 40 in that game. Zion did leave that game early, too, because um, I believe that was a game he got poked in the yeah. eye. He only played 11 minutes while he wasn't even in the game towards the end. Maybe that's also why he, Ricky only had 11 points in that game. The thing I look at is... And this is kind of on both sides. You can do this for the rest of the season for Duke, but also the big three in their draft stock is I wonder, and this might be a small sample size that we get this, does Tyus Jones help the draft stock of R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish? And the reason why I say that is Zion, to me, his stock is solidified. I'm going to ask you a question about that later on. Like he's solidified, number one pick in the draft. There is no because we because we know nobody. everything that he can do, and he is so like at, the things that he was doing against Virginia are like the same things I've seen at the beginning of the year. Every time he does it, though, I go holy shit, and I show Dave, or holy crap, and I show whoever I'm with. He is a human highlight reel every single game that he is in. Like I showed you the one clip from the Virginia game. Where he cocks back the dunk, Virginia kid comes in to even foul him, makes contact with the arm, and that's not even enough. Zion still powers through it for the dunk to go to the line for the and one. The thing that I think with Tyus Jones, you're exactly correct. I would I would describe it as he's the glue to the big three. Because not just you hit on the defensive side, with me offensively, he's a true point guard, like you mm -hmm. said. And with a true point guard, he's going to dish out the assists and make sure the ball needs to go to where it needs to go to, especially when they're in the half court. Like, that's the thing about Duke. When they're in the full court, like the up tempo transition game, then you don't need, like, you don't need um, Trey out there. All you need is Zion running it, RJ running it, Cam running it, whoever gets the rebound and goes with it. Usually it's going to be Zion or RJ. But when you get stuck in the half court and need to actually call a play or two, that's where Trey Jones becomes so vital because he can then, like, I'm not saying he's the number one, but he can be the guy to say, hey, I can 
fit in here where you need to. Okay, RJ, you're not going to run this play. This is one that's going to start with me and can get the ball where it needs to go and kind of help these three Dukies, the Reddish, Barrett, and Williamson, all kind of coexist together. Speaking of Reddish, Mm -hmm. how poorly has he played lately? I mean, I know he wasn't in the game against Syracuse, Mm -hmm. but what a liability. (laughs) He's been on the floor Mm scoring-wise. He's been crap. Mm -hmm. He's been garbage. It's been really pathetic. I mean, you look – I mean – and this is this just goes to show in terms of stats. Except from Dece- for his game against from Florida Dece- State, from December fifth, from mm-hmm. December fifth to January eighth, mm-hmm. he went two of twelve, four of twelve, three of eleven, one of seven, one of eight, four of nine. Mm-hmm. Get off the floor. Get off the floor. Mm-hmm. Yes, you played well against Florida State. Good. You needed to. That's why you won. But I mean, what a liability! You cu- you 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 show up like that in the tournament. Great season. We only lost four games, but we lost our first one here today because he went one of eleven. Mm-hmm. And you're a one and done player, and you're going to the draft, and pff, you did nothing at Duke. Basically, you did nothing. Great, wonderful season. You're gonna still get drafted top ten, top whatever, mm-hmm. but. You didn't do it. I mean, the the inconsistency that he has had lately is really, really poor. And I hate to call him out because I truly think he's a great player. I do. But he has been awful. Outside of Florida State, he's been awful the last seven games. Well, and the thing with Cam Reddish that I— Even Virginia. Virginia, he struggled mightily. The Virginia game—okay, here's what I'm going to say with the Virginia game. And I might give him a pass for Virginia— if, if there's because, any game that you're going to give a pass, yeah, it would be. Because, Virginia. like, I look at the Virginia game, and even coming in, like, my thought was even just by looking at the box score, my first thought was, oh, DeAndre Hunter was probably on him heavily. And DeAndre Hunter, one of the biggest things we talk about, whether it's big board mock draft, is his defensive skill and how good he is defensively. And I know that Cam Rush didn't play against Syracuse, but I'm going to pull them into it as well. The thing that is unique about both of these games for all the Dukies is that they just played the two best defensive teams that they were going to play this year. And guess what? They get them again. And guess what? They could get they one. Could get them again. Maybe both. They, they, they maybe, could definitely get Virginia two more times. Yeah. They could get Virginia two more times. They could even get Syracuse two more times, depending on how the bracket falls out. Hell, they might get these teams... Four more times. One of them, because if Virginia goes far with Duke, could meet in the national tournament. And if Syracuse gets into the tournament and they're kind of like a mid-team like they usually are, they could progress through a region and depending on where they're placed, could meet Duke again. So there's even a possibility they meet one of these teams four times this year. With Cam Rennish, the thing that I think about it is, is you've got out of the three Dukies, Zion's the top. There's little things that you can nitpick from Zion in college. Like, there are a lot of people that are just like, everything that he needs to work on is a next level problem. It's not a college problem. With RJ, the thing that I see from him is very much, I'm going to say, kind of like the Russell Westbrook syndrome of like, I'm, I don't want to say the word chucker, but I'm going to say the word chucker. Like, you look at it. Just game by game. The Florida State game, RJ went 10 of 19. The absolute next game where Cam Reddish was not out there, 8 of 30 for RJ. Like chucking chucking up shots where it's like get to 30. Yeah, he finished with 23 in that game, but that's because four of his eight shots were three-pointers in that Syracuse game. But he shot 80, and he only made 10 of them. And then Virginia, 11 of 19, a lot better, went to the line. Him and Zion feasted at the line, although Zion, I wish your um, 50% from the line was a little bit better. Maybe would have cracked 50% 30 from the line at that crap. point. The thing is, I feel like as the season goes on, 
Cam Reddish and RJ, we're just going to nitpick them. Does Is that going to affect where they go? No. These three will probably be all top four. They'll all be top five picks in the NBA draft. But I just, with Cam Reddish, the thing that I see from him is his scoring is there, like, when he's on. He has a shot. He can shoot from three. The thing I look at, though, is besides defense, what else is going to make him stand out from the other two or even John Morant? Because he's now in the conversation. If we're talking top four, RJ and Zion are better rebounders. Both of them have better assist numbers. It's what is going to make you stand out compared to the other two because right now in his really good games, it's just his shooting and that he can shoot from an NBA three or a projected NBA three very well. Cause like if I look at his, his assist numbers and yet again, this is how he fits into that system. One, three, one, one, zero, one, three, his highest has been four. And that was the Hartford game. You look at rebounds. Yeah. He had the most rebounds against Virginia with eight, but even before that, three, two, zero, three, three, three. The most rebounds three. he had before that was five against mm-hmm. uh, uh, was five against Auburn, and seven. then before that, it was Army. Yep, seven. In game two, mm-hmm. I'm but and that but that's my that's my problem here. That's my problem here, and that's that's where scouts are gonna say, mm-hmm. "What have you done for me lately?" Type of thing. And what have you done for your team lately, which is why a John Morant might be able to move up Mm -hmm. ahead of him because, again, I know, and we'll get a little lot from from our from our viewers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, scoring's great. Yeah. But what else has he done? And that's why the the, hold on just a second is that scoring is great. Yes. And that's what a lot of us look at because that's where most people have the most impact. Mm -hmm. But like you've mentioned, the rebounds, eight rebounds, that's. That's not a lot. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot. The the other things that I look at are steals, blocks, assists, obviously. Only four assists. Most assists in one game is four. Mm -hmm. Most steals in a game, he had four back-to-back, Hartford and Yale. Well, I mean, you and I could have steals against Hartford and Yale. Uh, Then talk for yourself, Brandon. (laughs) I'm not a big defensive guy. I... I, I, in my old age, my old almost 30 age, shit, sit me in the corner. I'm here, Kobe. Shoot me, pass me the rock. I'll shoot the three. Okay, yeah. I guess I'm a little <laughs> bit more uh, active and mobile than mm-hmm. you are. But um, he's killing you on the floor because he can't shoot. I mean, I, 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 I'm not saying that he did in Virginia, mm-hmm. like, well, rather against Virginia at home. I'm not saying that he did at Florida State. He had 23 there. Mm hmm. But it's the games, and, and, and certainly the games coming up are not going to be difficult. Mm-hmm. If you look at the games coming up for Duke, you're going to be playing two of the worst teams in the ACC. Pitt and Georgia Tech. Some of the worst offensive teams. That is not you. You shouldn't be getting uh, hurt by them. Followed by a Monday night game um, at Notre Dame, which we have. T- we been have. Crap. We have. And this is Dave, Sean, and I have played around with the idea of going to that game, and probably won't. Um, then St. John's, who's played better, and then Boston College before so, you get Virginia again. So what I'm what I'm saying is that he can he he might be able to d- pull this go three for eleven mm-hmm. and have nine points against a team like that. But when you get back to the Virginias, when you get back to the Syracuses, when you get back to the teams in the conference that are actually worth a dime, mm-hmm. I I think that that's where. You can't be inconsistent. You can't be pulling that type of stuff. And you also, if you're going to, you better get 10-plus rebounds. You better have some assists. Mm -hmm. You better have some steals, play some defense. That's what I'm saying is that I'm not even talking necessarily just for him. I'm talking that if he continues on that inconsistent type pace, like I mentioned already, the John Morants are going to jump in front of him. Mm-hmm. Guys below him right now are going to jump over him, and he is going to fall, and he is going to fall, and he is going to fall. And I'm not talking like huh, out of the top ten, mm-hmm. but out of the top five could definitely be a realistic possibility if he continues on what has been a very inconsistent December and January. Now, I've got two things I want to ask you. The first one I want to go into a little bit is – with Cam, the thing that you'll notice if you look at his numbers, Virginia, 
Six of his 12 shots were from three. He went one of six. Florida State, eight of his 15 were from three. He went five of eight. Against Wake Forest, seven of his nine were from three. He went two of seven from three. O of four from three, half of his shots against Clemson were from three. The point I'm getting to is if you look at his numbers, most of them are coming from three. They are. And the thing that I wonder, and this is me going into the mind of an NBA scout, is one of the things we have said, and even as I look at Tankathon right now, whether when they have stat strengths and stat weaknesses, projected NBA three is on the stat strength and has two plus marks. Steals is at four, so that's like his biggest thing. Like, yes, he brings defense to the table, and that's what I think. If he didn't have that defensive part, he's not in the top five. He might not be even in the top ten for well. He'd be in the top ten at the most, but if he didn't have that defensive ability. Cam Reddish is nowhere near the top five for me right now. The thing I wonder with NBA teams is when they look at his film, when they look at him play, are they going to look at it and say two things and kind of give him the benefit of the doubt for this? The first one is going to be, well, most of his shots are from three. We can work on that with him. But and he's se- not even been effective there And the second lately. one, will they be saying, hey – the reason why he is so inconsistent is because of the Duke system is because of playing next to RJ and Zion. They're like coach K is doing what he can because Dave always brings up this point. College coaches, their MO, unless you're John Calipari is to win basketball games. John Calipari is the only one that has made his MO. You come here. I'll get you drafted in the NBA. Every other coach, it's I'm here to win basketball games because that's why the school has employed me as their head basketball coach. Will scouts look at Cam and go, I see the foundations there of a shot. I don't have to fix your shot. A la Buddy Heald um, a long time ago when he had to fix his shot sophomore year of college. Will they look at it and go, it's the, it's the system he's in. It's playing next to RJ, playing next to Zion that is creating this inconsistency because he can never get in a rhythm because of the environment that he is offensively where it's not the same thing every game. It's being able to just do it on a dime when Zion and RJ don't have the ball. I mean, I think that's kind of a cop-out. Um, if you're a good player, you're a good player. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter. Um, and if you take away the Florida State game, uh, so then three of the last four games that he's played, Clemson, Wake Forest, and Virginia – he has gone three of 17 from three. Mm-hmm. Th- if that's supposed to be your specialty, not very special. Not very special in, in, in those games. And and it, it would be worse if I went uh, in games farther back. Mm-hmm. That's not good. That is not good. And especially when you're bringing up the great point of many of his shots are coming from there. He goes two of 12 in a game where he also went one of nine from three. Or 4 of 12 went 0 of 5 from 3. 3 of 11, 3 of 8 from 3. Mm-hmm. I, but I guess, Ricky, is that the reason why we can talk about this as not being a complete and utter disappointment for Duke is because at the same time they have Cam Reddish, they have R.J. Barrett, they have Zion Williamson, they have Trey Jones, obviously, who is injured. If... They were relying solely on a guy like Cam Reddish right now. They didn't have a Zion. They didn't have an RJ. Well, they probably wouldn't be Duke then. But we would be talking a much different game Mm -hmm. with Cam Reddish because he would be killing his team instead of just kind of playing a third fiddle and, 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 and people saying, well, he hasn't been doing great, but they haven't been losing because of him. They've been winning. They've been winning a lot of their games, only with two losses on the season. It's a different story without those other two guys. Cam Reddish mm-hmm. lately, he's he's been he's been a huge disappointment and a liability on the floor. Well, and the thing I find, of course, this website that I just found, um, the Stepian. dot com, um, they have a shot chart, and I will say. 
They haven't updated the shot chart since Christmas. Um, so everything since the Clemson game on, so four games, have not been added into this, but you can still kind of use it for ballpark. If you're looking at the three-point shot for Cam Reddish, left wing, so basically left side and left corner, is 3 of 10. He's shooting 30%. Um, above the break, so everything in the middle, um, he's 20 of 53, about 37, almost 38%. And then the right wing, similar to the left wing, 3 of 10, 30%. Um, that's the thing that I think going forward that with Tyus Jones being out and kind of to go to that question that I was getting to at the beginning was how is Tyus Jones going to hurt their draft stock? Cam Reddish might be the might be the one that it hurts because he's the one to me that is not the ball dominant one in this system or that we have not seen be the ball dominant. Zion is ball dominant. RJ, the ball in his hands, likes to shoot up a bunch of shots. Wins and losses, it's not going to affect only when we get to like Virginia and Syracuse. Um, or even let's see what happens when they get to UNC, but I don't expect UNC um, to be a huge problem for Duke because they have their own questions that I have with their team. Last question I want to ask you, and this is the Zion question that I had you prepped for. So on the jump, Scotty Pippen said that there is nothing that Zion needs to work on in college. He's already solidified his number one draft stock. And on the jump, Scotty Pippen said Zion should sit out the rest of the year. I want to pose that question to you. Should Zion Williamson shut it down for the rest of the year? Or do you think that he has, like, basically, should he shut it down the rest of the year? Or should he play out the rest of the season? No, he shouldn't shut it down the rest of the year. I think... I'll be honest with you. I think guys doing that, it's a, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's ridiculous. It'd be one thing if Zion Williamson was injured. Uh, now go back to, if, if you tran transition over to, to football and college football, where we had uh, Nick Bosa mm -hmm. shut it down for the rest of the year. Okay? Still kind of weird. Mm -hmm. He, he kind of like withdrew from school, shut it down for the rest of the year. But he was injured. There was an injury yeah. there. Zion Williamson is completely healthy, and he is the lifeblood of Duke basketball. Let's mm -hmm. be honest about it. There's no reason for him to shut it down. Why? Why? Why not enjoy, especially you love playing basketball. Mm -hmm. You're a healthy player. You are good. You are great. People mm -hmm. love watching you night in and night out. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it's obvious. Everyone knows, it and he knows it too. You have one year at, at Duke. Then you're going to the NBA. Keep playing. The, it, ridiculous mm -hmm. to shut it down, in, yeah. in, 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 in my opinion. Different if there's an injury. Mm -hmm. Then I can maybe get it. There is no injury. Do not shut it down. Well, and I, for me, I understand the with the analyst side of things. When an analyst goes, you've solidified your number one. Like his big thing, Scotty Pippen said, was with your body size, one wrong fall and you could injure yourself. And if you get injured the rest Everybody. of the season... Everybody. My gosh, Ricky, you the, and I walking I could down sneeze. the street... I could sneeze could, and yes. injure my back. Yes. I could do that. Like, would I? Hopefully not, but I could do that. And that's why, for me, like, I am on the side of don't shut it down. Because, um, like you said, like, he is the lifeblood of Duke. And it depends on what's going on in Zion's head, if winning in college is important, because every guy is different. But for me... If he shuts it down and it's just RJ and Cam Reddish, this Duke team changes. This Duke team changes. They're no longer, to me, the – yes, they're still a really good team. They'll probably still be a one seed, but they are no longer that team that is, like, for sure probably going to run through the tournament um, and win everything. However, there is a chance that they can lose. They've done it before. Um, you just catch them on the wrong night or the right night for the other team, and they can get a win – I just I wanted to throw it your way because Zion is who he is at number one, but I am with you. Do not shut it down. Keep it going and make this year one of the most special years um, in Duke basketball. Any final thoughts before we move on into Matt's segment? No. Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in that comment section about Ty, uh, Trey Jones. 
see, I caught myself twice now. Um, Trey Jones's injury, how does that affect Duke? And then anything we talked about, the draft stocks of Zion, RJ, and mainly Cam Reddish. That's the one that we mainly hit tonight on the podcast. And of course, the Zion question. Let us know what you think. Should he shut it down or not? 